guys and welcome to episode 42. We took a week off uh, last week. We had a lot going on. Um, I actually was doing a pretty high-end exam on Monday, so I had to spend Sunday studying, uh, which worked out. I actually managed to pass the whole thing, so that's good. Um, but anyway, we're back. Uh, let's jump right into it with PlayStation and this week's trailer for PlayStation is Paper Beast. Check this out. It was Paper Beast. Um, it reminds me kind of like a flower, and uh, there was another one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head right now. But um, it does look like it'll be a cool little uh, title to play around with. Uh, moving on to PlayStation's news for the week Elytrian hits Monster Hunter World Iceborne uh, this May. Details of it are still scarce, but it belongs to the Black Dragon category, um, which is highly kind of coveted within the Monster Hunter World series or Monster Hunter period. Um, so anyway, more to come on that as we get closer to May. Today, um, however, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, title update 3 drops. Uh, this includes raging uh, Rakitos and furious Rajang fights that will include the ability to craft some of the most powerful gear in the game. The full Bloom Fest will offer some lighter challenges when it launches April 9th. Uh, to top it off, you don't, if you don't currently own the game, it's on sale until the 31st of this month. That includes both the standard game and the uh, Iceborne expansion. So if you don't own it and you would like to dive in, by all means, check that out. Um, PlayStation 5 hardware tech deep dive left a lot of people scratching their heads as it was less than what people were expecting from Sony, myself included. Now, just a little caveat on that, I was expecting at least some sort of rendering of what the system was going to look like. Um, after all, it was a tech deep dive. Um, however, it more concentrated on what was inside, which is all well and good if you're very technical or you're, you're interested in those sort of things. But a lot of people that tuned in were looking for a reveal of the console, pricing, games, etc. Which was not the purpose of this deep dive. And it actually stated in the announcement that it was going to be a tech deep dive. So those of you that were involved or even weren't, there was a lot of people complaining. Um, and that's because they honestly weren't that technical. Um, but anyway, since the one hour long deep dive with lead architect Mark Cerny, Sony has clarified a couple of gray areas. The biggest one being that Sony is pushing hard to ensure that an overwhelming majority of the 4,000 plus PS4 titles will be playable on PS5. I'm curious about the store and currently purchase digital titles as well because nothing's been said about if I purchase my titles on the store originally, can I then go into the PS5 store at the time 
um, and pull my previously downloaded PS4 titles to the PS5. This makes me, at least personally, because I own a PS4, um, it makes me kind of question whether or not I'll jump right into it or I'll hold off because when it comes down to it, if I can't at least take my digital titles with me, um, then it's kind of a waste in getting rid of my PS4. Um, but anyway, that being said, Mark Cerny only covered a hundred titles um, that he was referring to within the Tech Deep Dive. Sony has guaranteed that's not even close to where they're going to be when it comes to backwards compatibility. Now, the second thing to be aware of is even though it comes out with a 10.3 teraflop, there's a very key advantage to Sony's PS5 over this Series X. The I.O. throughput is two times that of the Xbox Series X. It's 5.5 gigabytes raw and 8 to 9 gigabytes compressed, whereas the Xbox Series X is at 2.4 and 4 to 5 gigabytes um, compressed. So there's that. We still have to wait to see the official review for the form factor and release titles. But this is not a portion to be taken lightly when it comes to the new console. That's all I'm really going to say on that because a lot of people are doing deep dives into this whole thing and kind of tearing it apart spec versus spec. I could do that all day, um, but that's not why we're here. So I just wanted to touch on those aspects of the PS5 deep dive. Now moving into Xbox. Xbox's trailer for the week is Bleeding Edge. Check this out. Looks like an awesome uh, combat type game uh, when it comes down to it. It's got kind of the same art visuals as the Borderlands style, which is really cool. Um, but anyway, moving on. Doom Eternal is now available and you can jump into the campaign very easily with an epic single player fight through hell and beyond. But also beyond the campaign, there is more. You can hone your skills with in-game events, collectibles, multiple difficulty modes, and master levels. The master levels are basically the take of the original level from the game that has been tweaked to make it more difficult. Um, battle mode for multiplayer and an all new 2 versus 1 PvP experience from id Software that includes one character being a fully upgraded uh, merc of sorts and the other two being demons that will fight that uh, said merc. So that's that's actually a really cool aspect um, that I'm looking forward to checking or in, looking forward to checking out. God, if I could talk every time, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's you guys. I don't, I don't know. Um, so anyway, it's out now and will be worth the play, especially if you grew up with the title like me. Now. Xbox did a huge tech demo uh, with Austin Evans and Digital Foundry that I encourage everyone to check out as we get closer to the full unveiling of PS5 and learn more about the Xbox Series X, we're bound to get more and more exciting news. I have a little bit of a hang up 
with the whole announcement, comment, whatever you want to call it, by Phil Spencer that Xbox is no longer in competition with Sony and Nintendo because although they're pushing xCloud, they're still releasing a console. Now, Amazon and Google do not have consoles. It's just the way it is. So, when it comes down to it, I agree that the cloud market, this would be their competition, but not with the console side. So, that's just kind of a little piece that irritates me about this whole release and information and all that good stuff. But, anyway, peace said. Um, the demo, however, does a full-on dive into the system's arch architecture and even gameplay. Check it out on YouTube. It's titled Xbox X Series or Xbox Series X Hands-On, and it's about 24 minutes long. Um, you'll have to definitely search it out by the name because if you go to Xbox's page, they're actually it's not there. Um, but that's it. Moving on to Nintendo. Nintendo's uh, trailer for the week. Is Saints Row 4 re-elected? Check this out. Hello, human. Holy shit. Earth is gone. And nothing we do today is going to change that. What's the plan? We're going to kill a lot of aliens. One thing we can do is get revenge. Switch next week. It was confirmed last September alongside the reveal of Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and was scheduled to be arriving early 2020. Now, the only info from a PlayStation blog of all places states that the release on PS4 is March 26th. While the Switch version is left out of the post, obviously, it is rumored that it could be released with Nintendo Direct, which takes place on March 26th as well. There's no guarantee. So we'll just have to wait and see if it releases on the same date. Now, this is kind of related to all, but was found on the Nintendo Life page. GameStop has been trying to remain open during the COVID-19 outbreak, but as of today, they will be closing access to all of their physical stores. They're moving to digital only, curbside pickup, and e-commerce delivery only. They've stated that they will pay their U.S. employees an additional two weeks based on their average work hours over the last 10 weeks and will reimburse all benefit eligible employees one month of employee benefit expenses. Um, at least they're doing something. So stay safe and uh, hope you can make ends meet above all uh, when it comes down to this. But. I think this could seriously damage GameStop in a lot of ways. They've been trying to remain open during all this so people could still come into the store. They're already um, kind of hurting a little bit. And when you talk digital, if I'm going to buy something digital, I'm not going to do it through GameStop. I'm just going to go to my PlayStation store, um, Xbox store, you know, whatever, and purchase it versus going to a third party who's more than likely up the cost um, to ensure that they're making money off of it. Um, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So, um, that's just that's just me. But uh, if you do want to, you know, contribute, you can go online and purchase. You can do the curbside pickup. You can um, do a digital and you can do e-commerce delivery. So, 
Uh, that's that. Let's move on to Stadia. Stadia doesn't have a trailer again. There's a few games releasing this week. However, they are older games. So I wasn't going to pull trailers for them. Hopefully we're getting to a point where they're going to start releasing on a regular basis. And then we'll start seeing trailers that I can post here for Stadia. Um, Ubisoft is adding three games to, st to Stadia in the end of March. The Division 2, The Crew 2, and Monopoly. All will come to Stadia between the 25th and the 28th. They also confirmed that Uplay Plus will be coming to Stadia this year, which means that the full catalog of Ubisoft games will be on Stadia for everybody this year. That's awesome, and, and a good play on Ubisoft's part, who's also doing the same for NVIDIA GeForce Now. Now, some publishers aren't so friendly with the NVIDIA side, and of course, we haven't seen any of their games yet on Stadia, so we don't know how that's all going to shake out. However, NVIDIA GeForce Now has a different structure, and we're not going to get into that here. But um, look forward to Ubisoft's play uh, when it comes out on Stadia. Um, now, I know this is a couple days late, but if you took advantage of it, then great. Stadia Pro Package. Um, I had a discount Friday, which dropped the price by $30 to $99. The reason I'm still covering this is because I think this could mean a couple things. But Stadia is trying to get more involvement in the platform, obviously. Like, that's, that's their goal. But also, that they could do this more very soon. So, um, they could be looking to offer more discounts on the Pro Package in the very near future. Also, this could mean that they're getting close to their non-subscription model's release. I've got no insider knowledge on this, um, other than the fact that it's been said that it would be early this year. And this, to me, seems like it could be a hint at things to come. And if you are going to start rele releasing it um, to be a free service that you just purchase your games, you might entice people to do it with a... Uh, Chrome Ultra and a controller for $99 so anyway that's it for Stadia and that's it for me guys so as always like comment subscribe share and again we're still growing the channel we're uh, wow, only about 16 maybe yeah about 16 weeks from being on a year and it's crazy. Um, we don't really do any um, any marketing for the channel or anything like that. Uh, we do post social media. So by all means, um, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week. Have a good one, guys.